So, this interview is regarding leadership. Mm -hmm. So, the question is, yes. how do you define a good leader? Hmm. I believe that a good leader is defined by his or her actions that actually help to move an organization to greater stature, higher reputation, and most importantly, improved outcomes. I think that's key. So, you are almost on the top position in this university mm -hmm. and you have held previous positions that you were president and CEO mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So while you are dealing with teams, mm -hmm. how you measure the results, their outcomes that your team is working right? So an organization like University of Connecticut with uh, more than 30,000 students and more than 5,000 faculty and staff, it's not easy to understand the outcomes of every single individual that contributes mm -hmm. to the university. But collectively, we measure outcome at the university on key metrics that are universal to public research universities. The reputation of the university, based on U.S. News and World Report, based on world rankings of universities, as well as more measurable outcomes based on metrics that are universal, including student success, graduation rates, job placement outcomes, professional school and graduate school uh, enrollment after graduation, right. as well as on the faculty performance components, extramural research, journal articles, and citations. So these are all metrics that we have readily available to better inform the leaders about the performance collectively of the university. So how you uh, define personal success? Well, personal success is a very difficult to measure right. as a leader of a university. The reason being is, is that I serve as the chief academic officer overseeing 12 different colleges and schools and as I mentioned many faculty, graduate students and staff. But the success that a leader would have is not necessarily due to that leader directly. For example, an academic leader who sits in the provost's office is not usually one who's going to be teaching the classes All right. or going out recruiting the students or performing the research. So really, when we talk about success of individual at the position of a leader at a university, it's more appropriate to talk about the success of all of the contributors, the faculty, students, and staff. And that's a more appropriate measure of success of a university and that of a leader. Right. So, I am very thankful that you gave me time. Oh, my pleasure. That's uh, wonderful to meet you and Christina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, my question is, as, yes. a, as a leader, you must be very busy. How you find time mm -hmm. for activities like this that not a productive in the short run, right? So how do you find time for such activities? I find this to be very productive in many ways. First of all, through the questions that you are asking of me, I am helping to better articulate what a successful university must engage in. So it's helping me re-emphasize in my own mind what is important for university. So I appreciate that opportunity. And also, secondly, whenever I have an opportunity to speak with a member of the community, I learn something new that I can actually find ways to integrate into the activities of the university. Right. So for example, I found out today that you are a medical doctor at Griffin Hospital with an epidemiologist uh, who is joining you today. 
And that ties into my activity last night. I was at the South Park Inn, which is a homeless shelter for men and women in downtown Hartford. And the reason that I visited that, that organization is that on Tuesdays and Thursdays of every week, we have our medical students and pharmacy students providing a free clinic to the residents that's, of that homeless shelter. That's great. So after this conversation, I want to find out how do we engage some of the faculty members and staff members at Griffin Hospital to al also offer that type of service to the community. So I find it to be a great opportunity to further the mission of our university through our students and partners outside of the university. Right. So, one of my questions that I like to ask uh, is growing up from childhood, yes, preschool age, then school age, mm -hmm. do you think your parents raised you in a way mm -hmm. that have really formed you, your affected your leadership style, or you think it was not oh, the early age, it is sure. something you get later in age? Well, it is uh, the parenting that I received from my uh, mother and father uh, was very instrumental in my development as a person. Right. And I think the most important lesson that they shared with me is to work hard and treat people well. And those are two lessons that I still carry with me. Right. And uh, throughout my, my development, and my development is continuing, I continue to learn from my interactions with individuals. Right. I learn from individuals who, in many ways, always do the right things. But I also learn from mistakes, unintentional mistakes that people make so that I can learn from their experiences so that I avoid the pitfalls that may arise in a career of an academic leader. Right. When you hire someone, new staff, sure. maybe a teacher, maybe a secretary in administration, mm -hmm. or a TA or whatsoever, what is the main quality that you look for, the number one. Strong passion for why they want to join a university. Mm -hmm. Many of the faculty members and staff members who are at the University of Connecticut and other universities are joining the university because they care about people. Right. They care about the education of students. They care about creating intellectual discoveries that will help inform a better society through their research. They also care deeply about translating the education and research activities to benefit the community and society. So understanding that they have that strong passion so that they're choosing this profession with the right reasons in mind is key. And uh, so I look for that. And I ask, why are you interested in coming to the University of Connecticut as a staff member or as a faculty? And through their answers, I can see the passion that they have to be able to give back to the students and to society in general. So growing in your professional life, you think you started as a leader? No. Or you developed from <laughs> managerial positions and become leader uh, uh, in the, as a transition? So I obviously didn't start off as a leader. I started off as a learner right. to learn the organization, to learn more about the aspirations of individuals that I'm serving. And my academic uh, administration began as an assistant department head to a department head, to an associate dean, to a dean, to a provost, and now president of a system. And at each step of the way, I start off by learning the organization. Right. Especially moving from one institution to another, 
there are uh, unique aspects of each institution for which I need to understand um, how I can provide value or bring value to that organization because not all activities are transferable from institution to institution. Being leader and work as a leader mm -hmm. is not an easy task yes. and for that you need a lot of contacts where you can pick a phone, ask somebody to do mm -hmm. something, email, personal meetings, okay. functions. Right. right. So to perform as a leader, how do you prefer to network? Does networking come to you naturally or you adopt some specific ways to increase your range? I think it's very important for a leader to not wait for networking opportunities to come to them. And when I say networking opportunities, I think of it more as engagement opportunities with stakeholders. So I like very much to interact with not only the constituents, stakeholders on this campus, students and faculty. I meet many faculty and students by walking on the campus, running into them and asking them, as a student, what they study and to see if there are ways that I can provide even little tidbits of advice during that short interaction. Right. It may be that I find out that a student is interested in graduate studies to inform that student that we have resources available to help them write an effective essay for the graduate studies uh, programs. Or meeting constituents outside the university, perhaps a business owner, who may not have realized that we have faculty experts who can actually help solve some of their technical problems. Right. Or to place some of our students as interns in their company. So, I seek out those opportunities by engaging the um, broader community proactively. Right. Mm -hmm. So while you face and you treat and you meet a lot of people, sure. do you come across staff member who is not really motivated and uh, you need to motivate them? Uh, a few. A few. and. Uh, great majority of our faculty and staff are extremely motivated. Right. Uh, but like any large organization, there's always room for improvement. And uh, in those cases, it's by understanding how we can channel some of their initiatives and their energies for more positive support of the university mission. Right. What are a couple of things that inspire you most to, to do more? I would say students. To know how hard our students work to attain their education, the sacrifices that their parents are making so that their children can reach higher stations in life through their education is really inspiring and uh, that makes me uh, redouble my efforts to be provide more support, resources, time and effort towards uh, providing the opportunity for our students to succeed. Right. Uh, do we have more time? I booked only 20 minutes. Sure. Okay. We have about, I would say maybe about five minutes. Would that be okay? Yeah. Because before that, then I will ask you a last question. Mm -hmm. So, for a competent leader, what you will suggest to new leaders, what competencies are more important that they should really acquire if they want to be leaders? So, I believe that anyone that has uh, attained the status of being a leader has the intellectual capabilities right. and uh, obviously the educational training and the pedigree to be able to assume that position. So that's not an area that any leader has to uh, emphasize to others to justify their position. The important aspect that I think, characteristic that I believe a leader needs to have is empathy to be empathetic. 
right. who understand the positions of individuals who are serving the organization to be able to walk in their shoes so that the leader understands the perspectives that are being shared by the individuals that he or she works with. I think that's a very key component. Uh, the question that uh, now come to my mind is these university educations and we listen a lot of stuff that we are producing stuff that is predefined and maybe in the near future it will be difficult to get fit into jobs mm -hmm. because the job market is changing mm -hmm. and it is changing quickly. Okay. Right. So how do you make sure that the curricula and the students and how do you inform them that yes you are t getting this education mm -hmm. but maybe you may not get the job right away mm -hmm. with that education of course so how you make them ready for future I think um, one of the responsibilities that we have as an educational institution is to not only train and educate the students for their profession but also to provide encouragement and mentorship so that our students become more resilient as well as being more confident. The reason that that is very important is that the employment landscape is going to be changing more and more because of technology and globalization. Yeah. That I want to impress upon students the job that you are training for now may not exist five years from now. Yeah. And so to continue the education and learning process even in an informal manner so that they can better prepare themselves for the changing world order. And I think that's a message that all of our students need to hear directly, not only from an academic leader, but from their faculty and their parents, and more and more they'll hear from their employers. So as I'm representing the population of MBA students, mm -hmm. so I would like to ask you my last question. What would be your advice mm -hmm. to a newly graduated MBA student? Hmm. I'm sure I could think of a lot of uh, good advice, but I would say to ask the MBA student to reflect on why they decided to pursue an MBA. What is the motivation? There is a sense that MBA students are going to become the captains of industry, industries that can make fortunes for state, for the shareholders and the employees of the company. But ultimately, is that the ultimate measure of success of a person, a citizen, to ask what are the corporate social responsibilities that the corporations that are led by individuals will be known for? And to ask, how can I use my education and eventually my significant resources to help improve the society that we live in? Thank you very much, Provost Choi. It is immense pleasure Thank to you. interview you in person. Thank you. And it's great learning. Uh, Thank episode. you for being here. Thank you, man.